taking a look at the Jack Richardson Artist Semi Moist Watercolors, 16 watercolors, and you might be wondering how we get 16 colors. Well, these are interesting. They have a neat little secret. They're double stacked. So keep watching to see what I think about this compact little 16 color watercolor set. All right, so we've got our cup of water. I've got some soft natural hair brushes and we've got our little palette. This is strikingly similar to the Yarka palette, which is distributed by Jack Richardson as well. These pans are non-removable. Only the top tray comes out. And on the back is a color mixing chart, which you can't really reference if you can't remove this tray. So I'm gonna try to do most of my mixing using the little included palette. I've been finding that I get the best results that way. And this little set actually comes with a Caucasian skin tone. So I may end up using that. And many of these colors appear to be opaque as you guys might have noticed in the unboxing swatch video. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and do kind of a wash using a big squirrel brush on the background. And it was pretty easy to do um, a fairly decent, mostly solid wash. There isn't any significant streaking or anything um, off-putting like that. I'm going to let that wash dry and then I'm going to go ahead and start in probably on her skin tone, although I may end up doing the shadow on her eyes next. Next up, we're going to go ahead and start on her skin tone. So we have a pre-mixed peach over here and kind of in keeping with what I did with the Benyo and the Crayola 24 pack, I'm just going to use what I have on hand. Now the skin tone is definitely pretty opaque. So what I recommend if you're using this set and you wanna use this for um, maybe nicer pieces is either paint on top of colored leads like I've shown you guys in some of our other videos or um, be prepared to maybe re-ink this afterwards just so that you don't have those sort of grayish inks where the paint has overlapped. So I'm gonna do some wet into wet. And then here at the collar as well. And then over here on this arm. And I'll give that a chance to dry as well. So that first layer of skin tone has dried. You guys can see how um, some of my wet into wet dispersed and these pans seem to have a lot of glycerin in them because when I go to uh, pick up some paint directly from the pan, it gets all goopy on my brush. So not too long ago, I field tested the Yarka Semi Moist Watercolor cakes, watercolor pans, um, also distributed by Jack Richardson. And they are very similar to these. I can't help but wonder if this is just the rebranding under his name, or rather repackaging. And I'd actually really liked the Yarka paints. Um, they seemed to be pigmented rather than dye-based, which is really unusual for children's grade watercolor. And I found that their color load and the way they handled was quite satisfactory, even for someone who's an adult illustrator. So those were, and still are, my top recommendation. This set might be a better choice if you're buying for a child who enjoys art, since there's more colors some of the colors are opaque, like the skin tone and like that lavender I just put down. So it might be easier for them to quickly achieve the effects they want. Now, I think that opaque bit on the skin looks really weird. I'm not 
personally a fan of opaque skin tones because I feel like it kind of deadens the look of the skin. It kind of looks like pan makeup rather than, at least when it comes to watercolor, I don't like gouache effects for things like skin tone. And that's something I usually try to avoid. So my personal preference is that I don't care for that skin tone, but I could very easily mix a more suitable skin tone for my character from the provided colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend that initial application of skin tone out a bit. And there is some movement, but not necessarily a lot of color separation, which is nice. And I will let that dry as well. Okay, so her skin has had a chance to dry and I'm really not excited about how opaque and sort of like cakey makeup it looks and also how patchy it is. So I'm gonna try to lift some of the areas a bit and then let that dry and then repaint it because it's just not doing it for me. But that's okay, this is how we learn about what works for us with a new supply and what doesn't work for us. Making mistakes is a great way to figure out your boundaries. All right, let's try that skin tone again. I should also point out that if you apply this as thickly as I'm applying it in almost like it's gouache or opaque watercolor, you are going to end up with sort of a glycerin shininess to it, a, a bit like an oil slick. Um, and I personally find that frustrating to work with, but that's kind of a your mileage may vary sort of thing. All right, grabbing a little bit of a almost like a magenta color from over here. That might be too pink. And I'm going to try and layer that over this strange skin tone. I probably went too thick with the skin tone. I probably should not have painted it that opaque. course when you paint it that thick there's also a strong chance that it's going to pick up the prior layer so actually maybe I should show you guys how we would fix that so if you have painted yourself into a corner like I have and your skin tone is just too much or too full of glycerin or what have you you're going to need some clean paper towels Ideally a clean cup of water. Mine is already really muddy just from this. And um, hopefully we won't ruin this further, but you're basically going to use a soft brush and apply water all over the skin because we're basically just going to lift as much of it as we can off the paper and then try to do a salvage mission from there. And hopefully we can get some better results. Okay, so see, ideally you would be using a paper towel that doesn't have a lot of texture because the texture is gonna show up as it did here. It looks like she's got like the pox or the mange or something. So to correct that, I'm just going to re-wet it and then go over it with a paper towel yet again hopefully get those areas that were missed. All right, we managed to get most of the skin tone up. There's still a little bit left. Just gonna try to even that out. And that trick won't always work. It does work with paints that have a lot of glycerin in them or a binder similar to glycerin, so you could do this trick with uh, the Kuratake Gensai Tambi paints. And I'm gonna do a little patch up job over here by her arm. 
because that got lifted and that wasn't intentional. Stab that in there. And then blend out. And these, the opaque colors take very, very little to lift them off the paper again. Pretty much just add water on top of them. So for these opaque colors, you're not going to be doing a lot of layering with them. All right, let's try skin tone part two, electric boogaloo. I wonder if some of these colors are on a separate pan because they're opaque and the ones on the other pan would be transparent. Unfortunately, I have misplaced, AKA probably tossed the swatch sheet in an attempt at house cleaning. All right, paper is still wet. Probably should have waited. And we're painting today on very cheap Canson's sold in bulk, sold by 100 sheets watercolor paper. I can link that in the description below. Just a little more affordable than the nicer stuff I sometimes use. And it is a cellulose base paper, wood pulp base paper, and probably very similar to what most student grade watercolorists are gonna have access to. That is a bit better. We'll let that one dry. Ooh, I thought that first layer looked dry, but it is very wet up there by her eyes, so. I'm just going to remove some of this from her eye area. And I'm just using a damp brush, nothing special. And I guess I'll let it dry some more. All right, so that skin layer has had plenty of time to dry. Rather than make the same mistake twice, I'll try to make a new mistake this time. I know that'll make you guys proud of me and grab some scarlet red and some almost magenta e color. Mix the two together and hopefully we'll get kind of a true red going on. Oh, that's, that's darker than I expected. So what I'll do is I'll apply it and then hopefully I won't pick up all of it. And then maybe blend it out a little bit. And then I'm also going to grab some of this red violet over here. Ooh, that's very pink. This would actually be more red violet. And then some of that warm blue. So we have kind of a violet. And I will let the pink I've added to her skin tone have a chance to dry before I apply anything. Boy, this stuff like lifts like nothing. Like it doesn't take any effort to get it to lift. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. All right, that is a very blushy Kara probably a little more than I would like. So I'm gonna try to mix a darker skin tone by grabbing the brown from over here and mixing it in with our peach from over here because I don't wanna get more opaque. I don't wanna get more saturated. I just wanna go a little darker. And these handle so much like wash, like I thought that color was gonna be a lot lighter than it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to lightly blend it out in some areas and we'll see if we can't get a little bit better of a result. I have a feeling these are the same paints as at Yarkaset, but I'm just handling them so differently that I really don't, I really don't like them in this form factor. Like I kind of wish I'd mixed my own skin tone like I had with the smaller eight color Yarka set rather than using the skin tone they provided. But I do know that if I were a younger artist, I would probably have 
used um, relied heavily on the skin tone that they provided. That's why I wanted to go ahead and do that instead of just kind of painting the way I always paint. And I'm trying to have a light hand, but unfortunately, unfortunately, that's a little bit of a struggle. And I'm a little bit afraid that if I mess with it too much, I'll end up just ruining it um, and then having to scrub it again. It's just not worth that, in my opinion. And then these, like so many other paints with a high glycerin content, they get kind of um, goopy and soapy. These also just don't seem to adhere to the paper as well as the Yarka set. Again, it can be, might be the colors that I'm testing out. Or the fact that um, I'm trying to work more using the little palette that was provided rather than using my daisy palettes where I would normally mix up a larger batch of paint and that might uh, kind of uh, deconcentrate, I guess, for lack of a better word, uh, almost a desaturate the glycerin content, kind of water it down and make it something a little more accessible and easy to use. Whereas with how I'm handling it here, I don't think the process I'm using is really going to work for that. So I'm probably getting more glycerin on the paper. But I, I do think that that is how these are intended to be used, where you mix it on the lid of the palette. And part of the reason I say that is um, most professional watercolors who aren't trying to get batch consistency the way I'm doing with my comic pages because they're painting standalone illustrations, they will use trays or um, butcher's trays or those sort of things, flat surfaces to mix their color and all their colors end up getting kind of intermixed and blended together. So you get hints of things. Um, or as the way I paint, the way I do watercolor is almost like a fill by numbers kind of effect um, because I do have like multiple pages in general to consider and that is usually my approach for watercolor. So I'm gonna grab that darker kind of um, Indian red and get started on her hair and hopefully that won't activate anything that was done on her skin. You gotta be careful on that little side bang there since it pretty much juts into the face. And I've got so much water in this brush that I'm finding it somewhat difficult to control. This color has good saturation though. And while that dries, I'll grab some of this off camera, unfortunately, blue. This one here. And I'll start doing mm, some of the shading on the lace here. Can't just dab up color either because it'll pick up the prior layer. And that is a little more intense than I would want. So I'm gonna use my paper towel and pick it up at least from the loops that would be closer to the viewer. And I guess let that all dry. So her hair isn't entirely dry. It is mostly dry though. And I wanna go ahead and try and get started on her dress, but I don't really know what color I wanna use, so I guess guess that NYX is that. I guess I need to keep thinking about it. So what I'm going to try to do is I have a skin tone, a skin shade color already mixed up from a while back. I'm try to do that without 
making the disaster that I've been doing the past few of these cheap watercolor supply video instances. And just try to kind of keep it light, keep it simple, keep it simply homemade. And not even really try to blend it out, even if it does not look 100%. I say, and then I do it. My hand slipped. I'm just a weak person, y'all. But that will just have to be fine. Get in there and get under the nose. Put another layer on the lips. All right, not great, but not as bad as I feared. I'm gonna go ahead now and start filling in her dress. All right, got that first layer on the dress done. So I'm going to give that a chance to dry. And while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of that pink and a little bit of that red and work on her cheeks a little bit since they got kind of lost in all this. She's gonna look like she's running a fever or something. For me, this is already looking kind of weirdly intense. Definitely more saturated. Oh, come on, that's not gonna work. More saturated than I really want it to be. I wanna be careful about soaking that up because it's just gonna leave kind of a, it's gonna lift the color underneath it. That's kind of been the takeaway from this tonight. So I'll use a smaller brush and start painting in those ever important Tricara freckles. And also go in and get those eyebrows while we're noodling around a little bit. So I have another brown and I have a black. I have, let me zoom out for you guys. I have this brown over here and I have a black over here. And I can definitely mix black and brown to get a darker brown. Um, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, ooh, very, very soapy. I may need to send this over to someone else along with the Yarka pack and see what they think because I wonder if it's just me, but these really do feel more soapy and glycerin-y and more prone to lifting than the Yarka ones do. I'll do a little bit of research and then decide whether or not I want to send this on to someone else for a second opinion. See what I can dig up. Often with these children's grade watercolors, it's hard to find any information besides non-toxic. I guess they assume that parents don't look that kind of stuff up or maybe they assume no one's interested, but it definitely makes it hard for me as a reviewer to find information that I need and I feel is relevant for you guys as consumers and do my best to dig it up for you though. I mean, the colors are fairly saturated, but they just seem to handle more soapy than the Yarka, which are almost identically packaged and distributed by the same company. However, if they are, if there is a difference in the two sets besides number of colors, that would be helpful to know since they do look identical, but they are marketed as different things. Next up, I'm going to grab the warmer of the two yellows included in this set. And I'm going to try to delicately get in here and paint her undershirt without activating any of the pink, which looks like it might still be wet, but it also looks like there's just a lot of glycerin on it. Okay. Oh, I think her eyebrows are at least good enough. So I'm going to grab that darker. Oh no, that's more like a burnt sienna. Okay. All right. We'll figure this out. 
since that is not the color I thought it was, I am grabbing some black. I'm trying to, at least. It's often to get it often it's difficult with these sort of student or children grade watercolors to get the saturation we really we're really looking for. That's why it boggles me, but I think I have the answer. It boggles me that people will post pictures to Instagram of like brush lettering they've done with like Crayolas, Crayola um, washable watercolors. At least those are in the shot. <laughs> and, uh, or the artist loft watercolors. And the colors are just brilliant. They're super vivid, they're very intense because I've worked with both of those watercolor sets and um, they're not. It's actually very difficult to get the intensity you want um, with the artist loft, they'll go down very intense and then they'll dry very chalky. So I think that's half of the answer is for the people who are posting the artist loft set, maybe, or maybe I just keep getting bad, bad, uh, bad breaks, bad, bad sets. And with the Crayola, as they dry, if you've gone really intense, if you've used a very saturated version of the color, it basically looks like you put a bunch of wax down on the paper and it'll dry really patchy and mottled. So I just want you guys to keep in mind that even though something looks good in photos and people are claiming it's what they're using, you know, there's a lot going on. I think that doesn't really get explained. Like with the artist loft, I'm pretty sure they're taking the photo while they're wet in order to get that high saturation because as soon as they dry, they turn chalky and sometimes they'll even start to flake off the paper, which is not, not a desired effect. And I can't really understand what people have to gain by claiming that. So maybe they're just having, maybe they have a secret technique that I don't know about. All right, time to let that dry as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try to add a little bit of shadow to her dress. So I'm mixing the red, which is actually a magenta, the red violet, and a little bit of that ultramarine or warm hued blue. And then for the yellow, I'm just gonna grab some orange. That's not how I would normally choose to shade yellow. Normally I would maybe use like a purple or something just very lightly applied, but I think that will work just fine. And then finally, I'm gonna add some water into the white. I'm gonna try to use the white to paint sort of a design on the background. Zoom out a little bit. And this is a really strange opaque white. It's not as opaque as I thought it would be. Um, and it is very glycerin-y. I mean, I didn't expect it to be like using Copic Opaque White or white gouache on the paper since those are intended to go down really, really solid, really opaque. But I definitely thought this would have more of an effect it's okay. Gives me an opportunity to kind of test everything out. Just doing sort of a simple paisley. It's sort of becoming um, almost like one of the symbols for Kara because it's one of these repeating patterns that I use really frequently in little standalone illustrations of her. And that is because my dad used to have paisley handkerchiefs rather than using like Kleenex or whatever. My dad would use handkerchiefs and my mom would get them from Walmart. You can still, I think, get them from places like Walmart. You can get them on Amazon as well. But anyway, I would always steal the clean ones out of like the fold and laundry and make doll clothes out of them. So when I started brainstorming for Kara, 
that is something um, that I just immediately started doing was doing little utilizing my own memories of playing around with paisley handkerchiefs to make patterns for Kara's clothes. So that is something that's kind of personal to my own history that I have included in my work. So I'm going to do little five point flowers and then maybe do some green leaves on them. doing leaves will give me a chance to see the green is a lot more like what I was used to with the Yarka set. I'm gonna have to pull that set out. And I know in the praying video I promised that I would show you guys how to mix a variety of skin tones and then something came up off camera of course um, and I just wasn't able to do that. So I hope you guys will keep an eye out for that video as well. I haven't forgotten. I mean, I, I was kind of too upset to do it uh, when I was recording the praying video, but I'll definitely do a standalone video with that set and show you guys. At least those of you who are interested how to mix sk different skin tones with that palette. Now, this Yarka set is in my opinion just really weird. Um, actually, it's not even the Arca set. It is the Richardson, Jack Richardson watercolor set. And it's just really weird. I'm gonna go dig up the Yarka palette and we'll compare the two. All right, here is the Yarka set. It promises 10 semi-moist, rich, tram transparent colors with full pans. And it was imported by Jack Richardson. This is my Richardson set. Artist Semi Moist Watercolors. Let's see, made in Russia. And then it also shows um, different ways you can mix tertiary colors. This does not have that on it. And I can even grab the illustration I made using the Yarka colors. I guess not, I thought I had that handy. All right, so not only did I dig up that Yarka set, I also dug up the illustration that I had done using this Yarka set. And you guys can see from the shine on those leaves that there's a fair bit of glycerin in this set too. But I felt like most of the colors weren't actually that opaque. Um, I did use Copic Opaque or um, actually probably PH Martin's Bleed Proof White to do the paisley, like we were talking about earlier on her shirt. So that's a bit of a cheat, but otherwise I was really satisfied with how these colors performed, how this set performed. Now it is a smaller number of colors, but as you guys can see, the cakes themselves are actually much larger. So you get a lot more color with the set. You could mix, you could paint a larger piece with this or multiple larger pieces because you can get your brush nice and in there. And you can do your blending on the lid. Whereas with this set, I don't know if it was because, oh, and I should also compare the colors. So looks like we have a purple that we didn't have in this set. We've got a, this was an indigo blue, also not in this set. This. I'd have to swatch that to see exactly what color that is. Yeah, that is a little more red than the magenta over here. The yellows, I believe, are the same. The oranges, I believe, are the same. This bright red, I think, is a little pinker. I'm going to test that out. A little pinker than the bright red in the Richie Sunset. A little bit pinker, yeah. And then this brown looks to be the same as that brown. So there is actually some variation in the two sets um, because we got a, a yellow green 
and a blue green. Whereas with this set, we got a actual blue green. It's more like a teal and just like a good middle of the road hooker's green. And we got two blues in this set and we got our purple is actually kind of an unusual purple as opposed to like a good mixing purple. So they are not even the same set. And now I am really curious about the differences in the two sets other than they're both made in Russia. So I wonder if I tried to do a painting with this set and I didn't use the skin tone in this, if it would be, if I would like it any better. So I will give you the two to visually compare for a moment. And I hope you guys found this helpful, useful, and informative. As it stands, my recommendation is the Yarka 10 color set over the Jack Richardson 16 color set. Although in both sets, the colors are vibrant. I found that the Yarka set was less prone to lifting when I did my field test. And you guys can click this card here to check out that field test. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'm gonna add a few additional things to this off camera. But other than that, I'm done with you guys. Get out of here, scram, shoo, beat it, kid.